Welcome to our webinar today, What is Security as a Service and Why Do Your Clients Need It? Today I'm very happy to introduce Timothy Martinez, who's the president and founder of Western NRG, which is an IT security company over here in Camarillo, California, just north of Los Angeles. Western NRG is dedicated to delivering expertise in scoping, configuring, and supporting the SonicWall Internet Security Solution. They are an Airspring partner, and we work very closely with them on our managed firewall service. Timothy is a 30-year veteran of the IT security space, and he's watched the threat landscape evolve over the years and has helped many clients defend against it. Now, we hear about security breaches all the time, but they're usually with very high-profile corporations like Yahoo or Experian. We don't usually hear about threats that smaller companies fall victim to. So unfortunately, many people think that cyber criminals only target large companies, and that's not true. Small to medium-sized companies are easy targets because they usually can't afford to hire the security professionals that you need, and they have outdated equipment very often, and hackers know that and will exploit that. So today, our presenters are going to educate you about the threat landscape and what can be done to protect you and your clients from being victims of cybercrime. Thanks, and welcome, Timothy. Thank you, Ellen, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Timothy Martinez. I'm delighted to be with you today to answer those two basic questions, right? So what is security as a service and why do your clients need it? Well, security as a service is a generation six internet security software hardware platform bundled with expert installation, ongoing technical support, advanced reporting, monitoring, and alerting. It's a platform that Airspring is making available to the small business community at a monthly recurring charge as opposed to a large capital investment. Why do your clients need it? Well, everyone needs a firewall. But what you may not know, or your clients may not know, is that not all firewalls are created equal. Two of the most frequent objections that I have to overcome in talking to small to medium-sized business clients are, number one, I already have a firewall, so why do I need yours? Number two, we're a small business, and I don't think that we have anything that a cyber criminal would be interested in stealing. So today I want to explain how to overcome both of these objections. I want to do that by starting with how a firewall actually functions. So the majority of firewalls that are in deployment today have a feature that's called stateful packet inspection. I want to boil that into layman's terms so we can really understand what I'm talking about. Stateful packet inspection means that the firewall is inspecting the source and destination address label, if you will, of the package. And I'm going to start calling this, these things package uh, and labels. So if you're on the inside of the network, the firewall implicitly trusts you. When you traverse the firewall to visit a website, it caches that information. This transmission was from Tom to Nike.com. Milliseconds later, the Nike.com website is trying to get back into the network to deliver that website to Tonk, and the firewall says, that's a match. I see the label identification matching. Tom ordered this package, and I'm going to deliver this package to Tom. So that sounds great, right? The firewall is inspecting the label, and it's not allowing anything to come into the network that was not already ordered by someone that it trusts. And all day long, thousands and thousands of packages are coming in and out of the network with this label checking or staple packet inspection story happening. The problem comes is that most firewalls aren't looking inside the package. They're not able to see things like viruses, trojans, worms, spyware, etc. In fact, from now on, instead of saying all four of those things in a row, I'm going to call all of those malware. That's a shortened up word that stands for malicious software, and it's defined as software intentionally created or designed to cause damage or theft of personal information. So now, many firewalls in the marketplace have a feature called DPI, or Deep Packet Inspection. And do Deep Packet Inspection, the visual that I like to talk through is it looks a lot like the TSA checkpoint at an airport, right, where you're putting your items uh, under x-ray, you know, shoes off, belt off, going through uh, the scanner, and this is how exactly what the firewall is doing to these packages of data. We're going deep inside looking for malware. The next generation technology 
goes way beneath the surface of stateful packet inspection to prevent intruders, to identify and give the admin a visual of what applications and what users are actually using the network. We have the ability to control applications by blocking or allowing them, or even down to the degree of throttling specific bandwidth for different applications. The example would be, I don't really want to block YouTube, but I don't want it to dominate the, the company's bandwidth, so I may choose to throttle that down to 10 or 20 percent of the bandwidth available. On the flip side of that, I may be a Salesforce company that uses that as my core application, and I may want to prioritize the bandwidth on that application because it's a business use case. So all of this sounds great, except that the internet is now moving to encrypted connections. So what do I mean encrypted connections? An encrypted connection is a private conversation between two parties that is encrypted. It's sacred. You can't see inside this package. It's extremely secure. The little green lock in the upper left-hand corner of your browser is, is the signature that this is an encrypted connection. You could type in many websites right now. I challenge you to do that this afternoon and watch just how many of them redirect you to an HTTPS, where S stands for secure, website. It's, it's huge. In fact, 68% of all internet traffic today is encrypted. And this has been trending upwards very quickly over the last two years. In the beginning, the only people who used encryption online was the banking industry. And rightfully so, right? So many of us have our bank accounts. We, we access them online. We do online banking. I log in. I transfer some money from saving to checking. I pay a few bills, etc. The first time you establish that type of connection, you are saying, I am Tom, and the web server is saying, I am Bank of America. You're shaking hands or exchanging certifications of authenticity in order to make that an encrypted, sacred connection that nobody can, can disturb. And for the most part, this is extremely bulletproof and, and not hackable, so to speak. So it's not just the banks that are doing this anymore. It's all kinds of everyday popular websites, LinkedIn, Facebook, Yahoo, Amazon, YouTube, Twitter, etc. Everybody is moving towards an encrypted connection. If you use Firefox, you can actually add an extension. Uh, Lightbeam is the one that we're using and, and showing you here. And the reason that I'm showing you this is because I want you to see that when you visit a website, what you may not know is that you're actually visiting several websites that are unseen at the moment. For example, if you look at uh, the CNN logo here in the middle of this, by visiting CNN at any given moment, you may be making behind-the-scenes connections to 20 or 30 other websites. Now, most of these are advertisers, but this particular data shows that when we logged into nine different locations, uh, nine different websites, that actually generated 142 third-party website connections. Now, mind you, these are all encrypted traffic. The reason why I'm, I'm telling you this is because it's very popular nowadays for hijackers, hackers, cyber criminals to attack one of these advertising sites. So you may say, hey, Yahoo, MSN, etc. These are these are trusted websites. They probably have very robust servers and very competent IT resources who maintain those servers. I would agree with that 100%. So a cyber criminal is going to prey on a less than secure web server like an ad server. And let's face it, these new sites survive on selling advertisement. I'm pretty certain that the economics take over here, and anybody with green money uh, is kind of going to allow you to advertise, right? Your money is good here. The problem with that is many of these advertisers do not have robust servers or IT staff or competency, and they fall prey to cyber criminals hosting malware in these advertisement sites. Here's a very recent stat from Google blocking 79 million ads from trying to send users malware-infected destinations, another 48 million advertisers for trying to get users to install unrequested software. So uh, once again, why is everything encrypted? What's the big push that's causing so many websites out there to move to the encrypted model? Two answers here. One, today it's easy. 
This was not the case last year or the year before. The only people who could afford to do this and had the competency to pay for a secure website were the financial institutions, the banking industry that we talked about. Today, a lot like build your own website, it's become commoditized. It's easy to do, and in some cases, it's even free. So why are people moving to encrypted connections? A, it's easy and very low cost nowadays. And even more importantly, Google is going to give you a higher search ranking if your site is encrypted. So it's a competitive edge as well. And between those two factors, we're seeing, like I said, 68% of websites moving to the encrypted model. So what's the problem with this? I thought you said it was a secure conversation, a sacred conversation, two endpoints, shaking hands, exchanging certificates, having a private conversation. And all of that is very true. The problem is your firewall can't do inspection on encrypted packages. We can't look inside. And guess what? Cyber criminals, hackers, etc., are very aware of this fact, and that's exactly where they're going to be targeting their malware to strike from. So there has to be a firewall that can move to a model of inspecting traffic that is encrypted. And sure enough, today we do have the capability of doing that. The feature is called DPI SSL. Here I go with more acronyms. DPI is Deep Packet Inspection. SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer. Many of you will know this as TLS. Acronyms aside, all I want you to remember today is 68% of the internet traffic is encrypted. 99% of all the firewalls in the world today are not inspecting encrypted traffic. Excuse me for pausing, but I have to say this again. Most firewalls in the marketplace today, dare I say 99% of them, are only inspecting 32% of all the traffic that's flowing through them. 68% of all the internet traffic is walking right by the firewall and into the customer network. This should be uh, shocking statistics for you. So what are we going to do about that? We're going to deploy firewalls that have the ability to do deep packet inspection, the airport TSA story I told you a few minutes ago, on encrypted traffic. How are we going to do that? We are intentionally going to be the man in the middle. In this case, it's not an attack. We are actually going to function by putting the firewall in the middle of that private conversation between party A and party B. We are going to become the certificate of authority and we're going to broker that conversation. Let me, uh, let me tell you what it looks like. We're going to get that piece of information and we're going to decrypt it. Then we're going to run it through our inspection engine render it good or bad, uh, block it if it's bad, of course. If it's good, we're going to re-encrypt it and pass it along to its destination. That's a lot of, it's even hard to say, right? So my job as a firewall today is I'm decrypting traffic, I'm inspecting traffic, I'm rendering it good or bad, I'm re-encrypting it, and I'm sending it off to its destination. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, here comes the packet back in, I've got to decrypt it, I've got to inspect it, I've got to make a ruling, I've got to re-encrypt it, I've got to pass it on to its destination. Over and over and over again, all day long, at real-time speed, because we all know our customers, right? We, we demand satisfaction, and we're not waiting and waiting for that to happen. I, I'm going on about this because I want you to understand that's a lot of labor, and it's a, a lot of horsepower required on the firewalls in to actually accomplish that decrypting, inspecting, and re-encrypting story. Not only that, it's quite an arduous task to actually implement this at a customer's location. Every computer in the network has to be touched in order for it to understand the sonic world is now the, the trusted advisor, if you will, in the network, and he's going to be decrypting our packages. We believe that every customer deserves world-class security. And although it's an arduous task, we are very willing to see that every customer has the opportunity, an affordable opportunity, to get the type of security that we're talking about here. This is what it looks like in real life. When we see encrypted data, it looks like alphabet soup. We decrypt it, we run it through our patented inspection engine, then we re-encrypt it and pass it along. So everything I've been saying uh, to this moment, all this firewall goodness, is based completely on a signature-based technology. And I really want to take a second and describe to you what that means. A signature-based technology means that I have to hear about or obtain malware in the wild I have to do a, a bake-off, if you will, in my lab. I have to categorize this malware, identify it, create 
an identification for it. We call that a signature in the industry. In other words, a big process to become aware that there is some malicious code out there. Once I do that and I categorize it, I identify it, I push out the, the antivirus, if you will, to all of my firewall subscribers, literally a million of them on planet Earth, uh, then they're going to protect it against it. Uh, tomorrow, they're not going to see, they're not going to allow a packet that I've identified as bad into a network. This is the same type of technology used in desktop antivirus. All of this uh, technology falls under the header of a signature-based technology. And it's very effective. Many companies have a very quick time to market once they find malware is out there. The problem is that somebody actually has to get infected with this malware before we can be aware of it and, and write an antivirus to stop it. And it's not usually one person, obviously. It's typically a regional outbreak. So several people are getting infected prior to anyone's technology becoming aware enough to prevent against it. And that's not good. In fact, I, I want to talk about what are we going to do with threats that we've never seen before. That's called a zero-day threat. So let me just define that real quick. A zero-day threat is a piece of malware that's never been seen before. It's brand new and it's not known by any threat detection platform. It means that it won't be blocked when it goes to enter a customer's network. For the hacker, this is a dream, right? Day zero, day one, day two, that is absolutely when a new virus is most effective because no one knows about it yet. Well, today, we have some very real-life examples of what zero-day threats look like. Ransomware and CryptoLocker are by far the most common type of zero-day threat. So ransomware is a virus that locks your files and demands a ransom payment to regain access to those files. The financial reward for ransomware perpetrators is incredible. You're going you're gonna to flip when you see how much money is being made here. On average, the per PC price over the year 2017 is $1,077 to get, get your files back, so to speak. The WannaCry strain of ransomware is probably the single largest attack of its kind. It was absolutely probably the worst digital disaster to strike the Internet to date. For sure, the worst thing that happened in 2017. And this is extremely lucrative. Let me tell you, every 10 seconds, an individual computer is infected with ransomware. Every 40 seconds, a business network is compromised by ransomware. I want to move this to a financial conversation. Globally speaking, this is trending extremely rapidly from $325 million paid in ransomware in 2015 to an excess of $5 billion. You heard me correct billion with a B, five, mil, five billion dollars in 2017. So it's a very lucrative market and it's growing at 350 percent per year. Everybody's getting in on it. So if you're a pretty astute technical person, you can take somebody's existing ransomware, tweak the code a little bit, and make it your own. If you're not so technical, but you still want a bunch of money quick, you can go buy your own ransomware kit on the dark web. I have literally seen these for sale, Jigsaw, Locky, Goliath. A variety of next generation ransomware kits are available. The pricing that I've seen is between two and three thousand bucks for a kit like this. And now you can go to town and be a hacker, an exploiter, an extortionist. So next time one of your customers says, I already have a firewall, so I'm secure. Or I'm just a small business. No cyber criminal will go on anything uh, that I have. You might want to tell them, really, what does it look like when you get hit with ransomware? What does it look like when all your data is locked down and held for ransom? You can't make a purchase order. You can't create an invoice. You can't make a bank deposit. You have no idea what's in your accounts payable, what's in your accounts receivable. You cannot transact business. How long is this going to take to fix? How much is this going to cost? And what are your customers going to do? You think they're going to wait for you to recover? Or are they going to go downtown and buy from a competitor? Are they going to come back? Can you even quantify how much you'll lose over the course of days or weeks of being completely incapacitated by ransomware? We can protect you and your customers from ever allowing this to happen. Introducing the SonicWall Gen 6 Internet Security Appliance. This is 
Airspring's choice for this multi medium sized marketplace. Why? Because it does the, the staple packet inspection. It does deep packet inspection. It does deep packet inspection of encrypted packages. And now it has a service called Capture Advanced Threat Protection. This is exactly how we're going to block never seen before malware and ransomware. So let me just kind of walk through what happens. So I'm the firewall and I see a package of information that I've never seen before. This is not an application. This isn't a virus that I have a signature for in my database. I'm not sure what this is. Should I block it or should I allow it? That's the million dollar question. Well, today we don't ask that question anymore. Today, we send it to our online sandbox in the cloud. The sandbox, let me just show you a picture of what that looks like, is actually a multi-million dollar investment, a three-engine platform. Imagine it uh, like a PC inside of a contained area where this never seen before file is now exposed to a computer just like the one on your desk and we watch it. We let it behave, we let it unfold and unwrap and execute itself and, and we do this in real time and then we make an immediate judgment. If this is bad, we deliver a verdict to the firewall and say, this packet is guilty, block it. Or we deliver a verdict that says, this packet is clean, this is what it is, pass it along to the network user. So in real time, with the Gen 6 appliance, we are able to stop for the first time literally in history, never seen before malware, also known as zero A threats. We believe that every customer deserves to have this kind of technology at an affordable price, and that's why we're partnering with Airspring to bring it to the small, medium-sized business at, at a shared cost, because there's no single customer that's going to invest millions of dollars for the platform that, that SonicWall has built. But if you go to the model, uh, the shared model, so to speak, we're sharing it with a million customers for a few bucks a month, and that makes a lot of sense in the marketplace. At the end of the day, not all firewalls are created equal, and your customers need to know this. And Airspring is here to help you deliver that message. You want to create value with your customer? You want to create stickiness? You want to add some revenue to your recurring Airspring portfolio of services? This might be just the ticket for you. Okay. Thanks. That was excellent, Timothy. So well, let's move on to uh, Mike Chase, our Senior VP of Solutions Engineering. Mike, you have the floor. Thank Wait. you. We work as a team. So I'm Mike Chase. About four years ago, I was actually running core engineering here at Airspring. Um, Timothy, great presentation, by the way, as always. I've been up to uh, Western Energy, seen their team met with uh, Tim a couple times personally. They, they have a dedicated team of professionals. And so my background, you know, four years ago, I was running core engineering. I left the company, started a cloud company. I was hosting for pretty large companies like Morgan Stanley, Bank of England, Zebra Technologies, and others. I sold the company about a year ago and thought to myself, geez, you know, out of all the people I've worked with in the industry, who would I ever want to work with again? And, of course, Airstream was top of mind. So I came back to the company a year ago and have been running the solutions engineering or what we call the pre-sale side ever since. i got to tell you, though, with 30 certifications, I'm a Cisco CCIE, um, very hands-on still to this day, active, uh, certified Linux, VMware, Microsoft. Uh, if you click the link at the top, you can check out all the different things I've done over the years. I'm not crazy enough to configure my own firewall, okay? So the benefits of a managed firewall are huge. And by the way, if you didn't, you know, if a question comes to your mind later that uh, you wanted to ask uh, Tim or myself, my email is on here. Um, I'm pretty easy to reach, 9 a.m. to 1 a.m., uh, seven days a week at mike.chase at airspring.com. But just let me know. But the point is, I've worked in cloud. I've worked in telecom. i worked for large companies uh, in the enterprise side like Broadcom, Wells Fargo, Experian. I'm not crazy enough to configure my own firewall because there's simply too many uh, bells and whistles and, and things that need to be configured properly. It's one of those things where you can't just put up a fence and then assume you know, nobody's still going to try to break in. They do all the time. I mean, literally every Internet connection I've ever put up within 30 seconds maximum, and I am not joking, you're getting probed, you're getting hacked. Uh, and so it's one of those things where you have to go in with the right hardware, the right software, updated signatures. You have to really look at this thing, look at the logs, look at the reports, update the software, deal with the zero-day threats. It's a job in and of itself. There's a lot to it, and so I always tell people two things. One, don't manage your own firewall. It really takes a team of professionals, and that's what Western Energy does 24 hours a day, 365 days a year to manage a firewall and to provide you with those regular reports of what your security posture looks like. I can't tell you how many people just throw up security hardware into their network and then walk away and never look at it again. They just assume that, you know, 
you don't have to do anything to it. And honestly, firewalls are like automobiles. If you don't do the maintenance, it's going to break down. And when it breaks down, you make headline news with your company. If you're a public company, your stock crashes. And whether you're a public or a private company, your CEO is left uh, answering some very embarrassing questions. And usually after that, a lot of people get fired. Um, your customers don't return. And your position in the market, quite frankly, is damaged. Out of the different competitors in your market space, you're now the untrusted company because apparently it sends a signal to the world that you don't know what you're doing. And so the benefits of a managed firewall are many. It frankly costs a lot less because one of the biggest challenges, like I said, isn't going out and buying the hardware and the gear. It's having the team who not only can configure it to its maximum potential, but will actually manage it and understands what they're looking at when they see something in the log. What is something that, for example, requires maintenance versus something that actually requires a security investigation, something that needs to be looked at in depth? Um, what happens when something is found and a breach is suspected and you need to deal with law enforcement and all the records and sometimes the packet captures and other things that they need in order to actually prosecute a case? These tasks can be enormous. And so that's what the team brings to bear, again, 24 by 7, 365 days a year at a price that, quite simply, you can't beat. And these are all the different pieces that go into a modern firewall. This is why, you know, personally, I, I don't do even, even my own anymore because it's just, it's just too much. Um, here at Airspring, by the way, uh, we're using, you know, we eat all our own dog food. So as many of you have seen our other presentations, you know, we use all of our own stuff, our own hosted phones. At our new headquarters, we have, you know, the VeloCloud SD-WAN box, and we have a pair of high availability sonic wall firewalls managed by our Western NRG team to make sure that we're fending off threats. Every week there's something coming out where if you don't have these, you know, potentially you can lose data, data can get stolen, encrypted, a lot of bad things happen. And there's a lot to configure. You're fighting malware, you're fighting, you know, malformed packets that are trying to intrude into your network and gain control. You're dealing with applications that may not have been patched yet, and therefore there's you know backdoors and bugs and different things that can be triggered in there, which can cause you downtime or compromise your security. You're having to deal with content filtering and all the liability that can really come to your company, uh, which at a minimum is usually tens of thousands of dollars, no matter what size company you are. And so you're trying to guard against all these things while uh, miraculously at the same time getting your job done. Very difficult to do. So what we guarantee with our service is that you're going to get a firewall that at the end of the contract, first of all, will get replaced, that's going to be professionally managed. You know, because over time, too, you have to replace these firewalls. And, and before you replace them, because it takes more horsepower, is more signatures and more software features, and more things have to be looked at, you know, you're going to have that in the platform. But you've got to maintain it, and you've got to keep the support, you know, all the different firmware upgrades and, and different things that come out. So it's quite the daunting task. And that's really where an OPEX versus a CAPEX model comes in handy. You know, at the end of one or two or three years, you really, you know, are sitting there looking at a firewall that's just a brick. You know, do you want to be the guy that's got to go find the electronic waste site and dispose of it? Or would you rather just call us and we ship you out the latest and greatest firewall with the latest and greatest software and, you know, get back to what we're doing for you every day, which is providing those security reports, looking through the logs, updating the firmware, updating the security signatures, and making sure that everything's running smoothly. You know, really, your access to the Internet is like the air you breathe. You know, your life depends on it, but quite frankly, you don't want to have to think about it with every breath. And that's what having a managed firewall is really like. It takes out all of the headache, all the cost, and all the pain. Quite frankly, if you had to hire a security professional these days, somebody who really, really knows what they're doing, much less, you know, 20 or 30 of those guys like, you know, Tim's got on staff, you'd be looking at a $100,000 employee. And of course, with anything in life, if you need redundancy because people get sick or they're on vacation, that'd be two employees. That'd be $200,000 a year. You'd be looking at sixteen dollars to $20,000 a month just to have the people in addition to all the hardware and software you'd have to deploy. So when you look at a managed solution from a cost perspective, it makes a lot of sense. As always with Airspring, not only do we have market-leading prices, I mean, essentially I always tell people Airspring is really made up about price, value, and flexibility. And so prices are always low. And the value is very, very high. You don't want to have lost data. You don't want to deal with security incidents. And Lord knows, you don't want to be on the front of a newspaper or the 6 o'clock news on television um, where they're saying, oh, the latest companies that got hacked. It's embarrassing. And it's happened to very, very large companies that we know. Everyone, if you remember Sony Pictures and Home Depot and Target and TJ Maxx, and you don't want to be one of those companies. And there's 
literally thousands and thousands of companies out there getting hacked every single day. So with us, you got one number to call, but quite frankly, we're proactive. You're going to be getting regular reports and updates. What does your security posture look like? If you ask that of your customers today, honestly, they don't know. They know they have a firewall. They don't know if it's outdated. Most of the times, if you're not running the latest and greatest version even of the firewall software, there's been bugs, there's been holes, there's been things found even with the firewall's own software that can be compromised and needs to be updated. They don't know if someone is using a legitimate port on the firewall to now get access to things they shouldn't. You know, things that maybe your firewall rules, when you configure things yourself, you left too many ports open, didn't really know what you were doing. Sure, you got the application working, but because it wasn't configured by a professional, now you've opened up so many holes that, frankly, if a security expert were to look at your security perimeter, you look more like Swiss cheese than a big old, you know, secure wall keeping all the criminals out. So knowing what your security posture looks like is absolutely essential to knowing whether or not you're secure. And even in really large companies, I have found that if you ask someone, they really don't know up to that day, up to that week, up to the month, maybe for the whole year at all, literally at all, what their security posture looks like. Um, we do have sample reports that we can share with you. Just email me. I think when you take those to your customer and say, you know, these are the things we provide you. This is what a security posture looks like it really changes their whole perspective on uh, firewalls and firewall security. And when you look at all of the, you know, again, uh, low prices, tremendous value. When you look at all of the different things that are included under one umbrella from Airspring, it's a tremendous amount of value. Otherwise, customers are stuck with, if the firewall fails, then I gotta go buy a new one. I don't know if I had the configuration backed up. Now I got to reinstall it. You know, when I configure it, uh, there's like 20 or 30 different things from web filtering to malware to network level antivirus to DPI SSL to capture APT. Honestly, if, uh, if, if you know anybody outside of Tim's team, anywhere in the world who knows how to configure those, well, you know, we've got a job for them. So we collect all these security experts, but there's really very few people, even someone like myself, who's worked in a lot of different industries, done a lot of certifications, who knows how to configure a firewall properly from top to bottom and then maintain it over several years. So these are all the things that are included in our service. So there's not piecemeal, you're not missing anything, there's no hidden gotchas later. You sign up, you get all this as one package. And the price is low. Again, if you hire one person, at a six-figure salary, $100,000, you are looking at $8,333 a month just for the person. Then you got to go buy the hardware and the gear. you got to, you know, maintain it, replace it if it fails, upgrade it when it's no longer, you know, you need a more powerful hardware, et cetera. It's a lot of cost. And when you look at these prices, honestly, it's dirt cheap. It is absolutely dirt cheap when you've got a whole team standing behind you who's dealing with all this stuff. And then most of our customers do a three-year term on the firewalls. At the end of three years, you get a brand new firewall. You get the latest and greatest, bells and whistles, all the features. And again, um, you know, off you go and you're still getting those weekly reports and updates and you know what your security posture looks like. So the pricing on this, it's a no-brainer. And we offer different packages. Um, you can mix the features up a little bit. All the features that you saw on the other side come included. And then there's some add-ons. The DPI SSL is a little bit extra fee as well as the capture uh, APT. But it's very much worth it. And again, you're not spending you know, $8,000 just for the person. So really the firewall and the hardware, you get to put all the money into something that actually matters, something that's going to work, that's sitting there doing the heavy lifting, looking at every single packet, whether encrypted or not, coming in and out of your network. And again, the peace of mind knowing that you can trust this solution, but you can also verify it, meaning that with those weekly reports and everything else you get with it, you know that you're protected against all the latest threats, including the zero-day threats that Tim talked about earlier. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Mike. We say thank you very much for your time. We value your business, and we hope to see you on our next webinar.